It's been a rocky road for the U.S. and Israel. Their cozy relationship in question since the announcement of new settlements back in March. Now Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is back in Washington after rescheduling his visit following the, the deadly Gaza flotilla attack. On the agenda, the peace process, the unconditional bond between the U.S. and Israeli governments, and of course, Iran. Joining me now for this is Normal Finkelstein. He's the author of Farewell to Israel. Norman, thanks so much for being here. Now, I want to ask you, you know, the, those were the issues on their agenda, but what do you perceive to be the real reason behind why Netanyahu is here? Regrettably, based on all the speculation I've read, it has very little to do with the peace process or Gaza or Iran. On the case, in the case of the United States, it's a pretty cynical uh, exploitation of a photo op by Pre uh, President Obama because of the upcoming congressional elections. It's been said that some of the major Jewish donors are holding back money because of the recent <clears throat> tensions in the U.S.-Israeli relation. So it's just a photo opportunity for the United States. It's unlikely that anything substantial will come from it. That's interesting that you mentioned the upcoming elections and, and this being uh, perhaps a prelude to gaining that support among uh, throughout the Democratic Party. Um, but as, as you saw, they did discuss something on the peace process, and of course Iran was part of that mix. Is it really possible that something can be made out of this peace process, given President Obama's two years to go and the situation as far as proximity talks is almost non-existent? Uh, the occupation has now endured for 43 years, and since about 1967, they've been talking about a peace process. I think we should judge a phenomenon by its results, not by what people claim. There's plainly been no peace process. What has occurred over the past 43 years is an annexation process. Israel has now approximately 500,000 illegal settlers in the occupied West Bank and occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, Israel is not trying to resolve the conflict with the Palestinians. The resolution is perfectly obvious. A full with Israeli withdrawal from the territories it occupied in June 1967 and the resolution of the refugee question. Israel is not trying to resolve the conflict. Israel is trying to annex, appropriate, in effect, steal uh, crucial parts of the West Bank. And I don't think we should play the games of the U.S. administration or Israel by pretending there is a peace process. There is no peace process. You mentioned some really important things there, and it does go back to the Oslo Accords of 1993 and, of course, Part 2 in 1995. Now, um, there, it's been discussed with scholars, experts, and, and many others that these were a failure, essentially because it did not produce uh, Palestinian <laughs> unity through the Palestinian Authority. Uh, Gaza and the West Bank are still occupied. So what do you make about this facade that there's going to be a two-state solution when many out there are talking one-state solution? I don't think it's correct to say the Oslo Accords were a failure. In fact, the Oslo Accords were a success. But you have to understand what the purpose of the Oslo Accord was. After the first Palestinian Intifada from 1987 to 1993, Israel realized it wasn't possible for it alone to police the Palestinians. So it was looking around for native collaborators, which is traditionally what colonial powers do, look around for native collaborators to police the Palestinians. And it decided to enlist the PLO, the Palestine Liberation Organization, which was at that point on the verge of going broke after backing the wrong side in the Gulf, first Gulf War, the attack on Iraq. And so uh, the Palestinians signed on as collaborators for Israel. And in fact, in those terms, the Oslo Accords were quite successful because now it's the Palestinians who are doing the policing for, the Pal uh, doing the policing for Israel in the West Bank. The part that didn't work out so well was the Israelis were hoping that the Palestinians would sign off an agreement which would give them large parts of the West Bank, the parts where the settlements are located. But before the agreement was signed, uh, unexpectedly, Hamas was elected to power. And so their collaborators were not as able as before to perform the dirty work for Israel. Now, Norman, I, I want to ask you about Iran. Uh, you heard the Israeli prime minister called Iran a terrorizing element in the Middle East. 
Um, what do you make of that? I mean, they did discuss the, uh, the aim for reducing nuclear weapons in the world. And as you know, Israel does have an undeclared uh, number of nuclear weapons in the Middle East. What do you make of that comment? Well, first of all, Iran is probably the least aggressive power in the Middle East in terms of actually having gone to war, having conquered other people's uh, territories and so on and so forth. The record of Iran in the whole entire modern world is quite good. In terms of the issue of the nuclear weapons, there's clearly a solution. And the solution has been out there and it's been put forth by the uh, sign uh, signatories to the Non-Proliferation Treaty. And the solution is to make the uh, Middle East a weapons of mass destruction free zone. And Israel refuses to do so. It is true, and we should agree, I think, that we don't want any country uh, to have nuclear weapons. It does pose a danger. And the case of Israel, the danger is quite serious because more and more Israel is acting like a reckless state. It's acting like a lunatic state. And so for the sake of everyone, and I here I would include the Israelis, for the sake of everyone, including the Israelis, that we should, ex exactly as the Non-Proliferation Treaty says, or has been recommended by the signatories to the Non-Proliferation Treaty, we should declare the uh, Middle East the weapons of mass destruction free zone. The problem is Israel refuses. Well, that was Norman, Norman, Norman Finkelstein. He's the author of Farewell to Israel.